And this is my review for Transformers Generations Deluxe Class Scourge. Scourge, as you can see, is a flying wing type vehicle. Um, I was really, really happy they decided to go with a different alt mode for Scourge when it came to making a, uh, an update for him because this is a drastic departure from his original G1 mode. I mean, G1, you'll recall, uh, Scourge was this weird hovercraft type thing that could fly through space. Um, I personally was never a really big fan of it. Um, I agreed with the uh, general consensus in that it looked like a shoe, um, and I just thought that it looked absolutely awful. I thought it was a terrible alt mode, so I'm really, really glad that they decided to give him a different alt mode uh, when they made the update for him. Um, I was really, really pleased with it. Um, it is a very, very cool alt mode. Um, I really do like this plane mode. I mean, it is apparently based to some extent off a real plane. Um, I can't recall the uh, make um, and model of the plane, so I can't tell you what type of plane it's based off of, but I am pretty sure it is based off a real plane, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, very, very nice detailing on this guy. Um, as you can see, he's got great panel lines, um, a really, really nicely detailed cockpit. Um, it actually is molded in. It's not just painted in. Um, they could have just painted it in and called it a day, but it actually is molded in, uh, which I think is nice. Um, I know a lot of people complain about this blue paint app ending really abruptly, but personally, I like it because I think it makes the uh, plane mode look a little bit more realistic. Um, he also does have very, very nicely detailed detailed thrusters in the back, uh, which is really, really cool. And the panel lines continue on the bottom, which I was actually pretty surprised at, because usually when you go to the bottom of Transformers, you don't find as much detailing on them, but there's just as much detailing on the bottom of them, uh, if not more uh, than up on top. Really, really cool uh, detail on this guy. I really like the detail on him. I really do like the paint apps, too. Um, I think that the paint apps are really, really nice. So this blue uh, paint and plastic, especially, is just absolutely gorgeous. I love the blue on him. Um, it looks really, really nice. Uh, I should mention uh, that the white plastic is very white. Um, it's not exactly bone white. It does have a little bit of a yellowish tint to him. Um, it's not as bad as on Reveal the Shield Jazz, uh, who had more of a creamy yellow yellowish white, uh, but this guy is pretty close to having a bone white paint scheme, uh, which is really nice. And I should mention the white paint that they used on his arms, actually, which you can see right here, uh, actually does match the white plastic pretty well, uh, which I was really happy with, because some figures, when they do white paint apps, um, it doesn't really look uh, too much like the uh, white plastic that they used on the majority of the figure, so I thought that was really nice. But anyway... Um, really, really cool. Uh, not a whole lot to say about it in terms of features. Um, he does have 3mm clip ports up on the bottom of him, uh, which you can see right here. Um, he also does have landing gear right here, uh, which you can flip in um, if you so desire. Um, this one back here is actually really, really tough to get out, so do be aware of that when you get this figure. Um, that It will feel like you're f really forcing it trying to get out, but it really does just take a lot of force to get out, so don't worry about applying pressure to it. Um, but anyway, um, he does also have the neat little feature um, of that you can actually uh, pull up on this piece um, and have his head pop out of his otherwise complete alt mode, which is actually um, a little bit of a nod to the original G1 toy. And apparently that was something that he used in the G1 cartoon and movie. Um, he had his head sticking out of his shoe boat mode. Uh, but that's really, really cool. I thought that was really neat uh, because it's an entirely different figure with an entirely different alt mode, um, and yet it still has a gimmick uh, that the original G1 figure had. So I thought that was really neat. But anyway, um, that's about it for vehicle mode. Uh, transformation on this guy, uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to bend down these wings uh, like so. Uh, then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and crack them open uh, because inside uh, you'll find his guns. Um, you get this little uh, laser pistol type thing um, and then you crack this one open. Um, you get this little rifle type thing, uh, which is pretty neat. Um, I did paint the both of them. Um, when you get this guy, uh, this gun right here is going to be entirely molded in blue plastic. Um, and then this gun is going to be molded mostly in gray plastic, but the barrel of it um, is actually going to be the same blue plastic as the rest of this gun, uh, which I thought was weird, um, and I didn't really care for it, so I decided to paint it to look a little bit more like his G1 uh, Target Master gun. Uh, you can, if you want, uh, flip down um, this little peg uh, right here so that he can hold this gun individually in his hand but there's also a clip port um, on it right here um, and then there's a clip uh, point right here on the gun uh, so you can attach the two of them um, and give him a gun that vaguely looks like his old uh, G1 Target Master Fracas which I thought was really really neat uh, but he will have uh, different paint apps on the gun uh, when you get him. I have custom painted this thing. i just let you know. Um, but anyway, we'll go ahead and set that off to the side for now. Uh, then what you want to do um, is you want to uh, you want to bring his arms off to the side. Uh, then you want to go up here. I mean, you want to raise this panel up like so. Uh, then you want to go down here. I mean, you want to kind of 
you want to get this blue piece uh, to wiggle free um, of the uh, to wiggle free of these tabs right here um, and then you want to split the legs uh, and then you want to pull on them and then push his knee all the way forward uh, to kind of lock it in place um, do the same on this side uh, do that, lock it in place. Uh, then what you want to do, uh, this can be a little bit tricky, especially the first time, couple of times you do it, um, is you want to bend, uh, you want to bend his foot down, uh, and then you want to bend it forward, um, and then push it all the way back uh, to lock it in place and get it in its proper position. Uh, then you want to do the same on this side. And then, like I said, it can be a little bit tricky. There we go. Bend that forward, push it in place. Uh, go ahead and flip this panel down like so. Uh, then what you want to do um, is you want to bring this piece all the way up. Uh, then what you want to do is you want to take his arms. I mean, you want to start sliding uh, this whole chest panel up. Uh, then you want to rotate this piece down uh, to tab it into place. Uh, then you want to uh, you want to bring this piece up, and then you want to rotate um, his waist around like so. Uh, go ahead and flip the legs around, and you can also take this panel right here. Uh, you can flip it back up. Um, it's kind of a kind of a butt guard type piece if you wish. Uh, but anyway, uh, then what you want to do um, is you want to take uh, this piece and there's these uh, little slots right here, or little slots right here I mean, um, these little ports right here. Um, what you want to do is you want to take them I mean, you want to plug them in out of the back. It doesn't lock in very securely. It does tend to fall off a lot, which is a bit of a shame, but oh, well, what are you going to do? Uh, I just thought I'd point that out since it is something to be aware of on the figure. Anyway, uh, then what you want to do with his wings um, is you want to you want to bend them inwards uh, like so. Um, then what I usually do is I rotate them down. And you're technically supposed to have them closed up like this. But personally, I like to flip them out. Eh, it does actually like to pop off uh, quite a bit too, which is a bit of a shame. I wish that they had uh, maybe fixed some of the QC issues on this guy uh, before they got him out in production. Um, it can be really, really difficult. I'm going to take him off camera for a second. Sorry about this, it usually doesn't take this long to get it back on. There we go. Anyway, um, as I was saying, uh, you're supposed to technically uh, have them uh, folded up like this, but I personally like to uh, I personally like to flip them out like so, because I think it looks better and makes them look a little bit more uh, cartoon accurate. Then what I usually do um, is you're supposed to have them flipped out. Uh, what I usually like to do is I like to fold them in uh, just to... Uh, give them a bit of a curve and make them look uh, not so wide um, as they would be just uh, being completely uh, splayed out. I think it looks better uh, folded in personally, but it is all personal preference. This is just the way I do it. Anyway, I do the same on this side. I fold that in like so, and then rotate it down and re-tab that in place like so. Uh, then you want to go ahead and pull his head up uh, like so. Um, you can, if you want, pull it all the way up. Um, I usually like to go ahead and pull it up um, about halfway. Um, I think that looks a little bit better proportion-wise, but you can, if you want, uh, flip it all the way up. But anyway, um, and then with his arms, his arms have a really, really neat transformation. Um, I don't really like his arms uh, so much on this figure, but I really do like the way that they transform. Um, you, first off, you want to flip this piece down. Uh, then you want to fold this piece down. Uh, then you want to pull on this whole assembly. Um, you want to rotate it around. Uh, rotate the shoulder bit around um, and then plug it in uh, to form his arm, uh, which I thought was really, really neat. Um, anyway, uh, then you want to go down here and there's a little lever uh, right here that you want to push on uh, to slide out his hand. It is a little bit tight and it does uh, put a lot of pressure on your fingers, uh, so do be careful with it. Anyway, do the same on this side. Uh, flip that down, flip that down to the side, rotate it around, rotate the shoulder around, plug it in like so. And then slide out his hand. There we go. Like I said, this piece really just does not like to stay in. I'm probably going to have to fix it once I'm done shooting this review. I'll put a little bit more glue on it to make it uh, stay in place. Anyway, go ahead and fold those in. Like so. And then just get him to stand properly. And we'll go ahead and give him his gun. Like so. And then just get him to stand uh, properly. Uh, fold out the wings in a little bit. Position them however you like. 
And there you have Scourge in robot mode in the off center. Uh, and very, very cool. Um, I really, really do like the look of this guy. I think he looks really, really awesome. Um, he is a little bit flawed in robot mode, a little bit more than I was expecting. Uh, the first flaw um, you can kind of see is just due to the way that the uh, arms transform him. It does cause a lot of pressure to be put on his chest piece. Um, so his chest piece is uh, stressing quite a bit. And I'm a little bit worried it'll break off at some point. So I'm probably going to not transform this guy too often from here on out uh, but he is overall really really nice looking um, I do really really like his head sculpt he does have a really really nice head sculpt um, he does have goatee bits uh, that uh, curl off to each side um, they broke off on mine um, and normally I would be bummed by that something like that but honestly I think he looks better um, without the goatee bits I think they were a little bit too over the top I've always liked Scourge's goatee but just on the toy I didn't really like the way that they did it um, he also does uh, have light piping um, I should mention I did customize it a little bit. Let's see if I can get this flashlight to turn on. There we go. Um, I did customize it a little bit. Um, he actually comes with clear light piping, um, and it looks blue just because there's blue plastic inside his head. Uh, if you take his head apart and put red uh, Sharpie uh, marker stuff on it, um, it will uh, cause his head uh, or his eyes to glow red, and I thought that looked a lot better than the blue light piping. I mean, it gives a unified theme uh, to the. Uh, to Cyclonus, Scourge, and Galvatron, so I decided to give him red eyes, but it does come with uh, clear eyes. Um, I have customized it a bit, uh, but it's really, really cool looking. But anyway, um, on to posability, um, his head is on a ball joint, uh, which is nice. It's a very free ball joint, too, uh, which is really nice. Um, and now for his arms. His arms, in my opinion, are the biggest problem, um, because I really don't like the way that they're posed. Um, they're on this weird kind of double hinge joint at this shoulder. Uh, so you can bend them down, you can bend them up if you like. So he does have very posable shoulders. Um, he also does rotate right here, uh, which is nice. Um, but there's no... There's no joint right here to allow his arm proper uh, to rotate off to the side. There's just this shoulder joint, which in my honest opinion, I think he needed uh, to be able to pull off the cool poses I was hoping to put him in. Uh, which is, you know, it is kind of my fault because I was planning to put him in such dynamic poses. Um, and it ended up being a disappointment because of his arm posability. Um, and that's really just my fault. But, you know, I still would have liked a hinge joint right here. Um, he does also have a... Uh, mid-bicep swivel um, and an elbow joint and his arms do uh, or his wrists do rotate which is nice um, he does have a waist swivel uh, which is really nice uh, he does have ball jointed hips um, he does also rotate at the upper thigh uh, he does have double jointed knees or rather not double jointed um, he's got a, one, a single jointed knee uh, that has a lot of joints in it I mean he does have a little uh, joint right here just due to transformation so he can move his knees up and down in a lot of poses which is nice he also does have ball jointed feet they are a little bit limited uh, but he still can't get some poses out of them. So, he does have uh, some decent posability, just nowhere near as decent as I was hoping for, uh, which is a bit of a shame. But, oh well, what are you going to do? Um, and like I said, uh, just to show it off, uh, you can, if you want, uh, flip down this little peg uh, right here on the gun. Um, you can give it to him um, in this other hand. Um, and his hands actually... His hands are really, really tight, which is a bit of a shame. I'm probably going to carve a little bit of plastic out just to make the guns go in a little bit easier, but... Yeah, for some reason, it doesn't want to go in. Well, you get the general idea, and that's what he would look like uh, holding both guns. Uh, but like I said, personally, um, I think it looks better uh, to have them both attached, uh, so that's usually the way I display it. But anyway, all up to personal preference. Um, so for some real quick size comparisons, uh, first off, uh, here he is next to uh, Revenge of the Fallen Bumblebee. So you can see he's actually a little bit shorter than the average deluxe. Uh, if you raise up his head all the way, um, it does make him a little bit taller, but in my opinion makes his proportions look a little bit more wonky. Um, and also it does have this... Uh, it does have this really noticeable little gap right here, uh, which I think they could have done a little bit of work on, but oh well, I usually don't show it off um, anyway, so really nothing to worry about. Let me go ahead and collapse his head up a little bit more. There we go. So anyway, you can see he's just a little bit shorter than the average deluxe. Uh, not by much, but still. Um, and here he is uh, next to the two figures that he was always predestined uh, to be shown with. Uh, here he is next to uh, 
it's the uh, Universe Cyclonus mold, which I have the Reveal the Shield version um, of. Um, and here he is next to Universe Galvatron. And they all look really, really awesome together. I mean, flaws aside, I think it was all worth it just to have the three of these guys uh, finally be able to pose next to each other. Just really, really awesome. The uh, ultimate Decepticon trio um, of Season 3. Just really, really awesome looking together. But anyway, so yeah, overall... He is a really nice figure. I mean, all flaws aside, I really do like him. Um, like I said, he's a little bit more flawed than I thought he would be, but he overall is a really, really nice little figure. Um, and I definitely do highly recommend him. I think he's a really, really cool little figure. Probably not the strongest in the Generations line, but still a really, really sweet figure. Um, and I definitely highly recommend him. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and please subscribe. This was my review of Transformers Generations Deluxe Class Scourge.